Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a quick After Effects tutorial about how to get started working with type animators. Now if you're new to type animators or it seemed a little intimidating to get into it, what you can do is use this extra little typographic system of animation to animate different parameters of text, letter by letter, word by word, or line by line. But it's not the most intuitive system to work with, so it can be a little daunting to get started. However, if you keep some basic processes in mind, you'll be on your way to creating some great type animator animation in After Effects in no time like we see in some of these quick examples. So let's get into After Effects and see what I'm talking about. So in After Effects, if we create some quick text like we have here and twirl down our little arrow to get our animation properties, in addition to basic transform properties like position, scale, rotation, there's this little animate icon. And what this does, if we click this, is let us create additional little animations of those properties and some others that'll impact type in different ways. Now, it's important to keep in mind this is different from these basic transform parameters and those still exist. So how we can use this as an example is if we want our text to go from the top of the screen and land here, what we wanna do is get it into position where it lands, let's call that position B. And then at that point, we're gonna click the animate button and get position. This is gonna open up an extra little position that isn't the same transform one and let us move it. And what we're doing here and how we can keep track of this is let's say where it is now is position B. What this extra little position setting is for is getting it to where it's starting. So let's call that position A. So to illustrate this, if we take this other little position parameter, pull it up to the top, it doesn't look like anything happened. But how we work with this type animator system is under this range selector that's added. And the main points to keep in mind with that is we're going to animate either our start end or our offset. So now if we pull the start, it's going to drop into place where we originally had it set it up starting at this position. So all we need to animate is the start stopwatch. So I'll turn that on, go ahead a couple seconds, and then put that at 100, and it's gonna animate from this position that we set up to its original position down here. And if we scrub through this, we can see they're falling into frame sequentially. Now, if we wanted it to go backwards, we could shut that off and animate the end, and they would go from the end of the word and reverse. What the offset is, is a selector in between that. So we can see we can move that back and forth, and we could have kind of a space in between if the start and end are not animating it different, but we want to animate this offset. So to create a basic animation, we'd leave end at 100, as it was from the beginning. We'll turn on our start stopwatch at zero, go ahead in time, pull that to 100, and those are gonna animate into place, and we can even turn motion blur on and get some quick little animation. Now, why this is useful is because all we're animating is this range selector, and we can use other properties to feed into this two little keyframe animation. So it's a really good way to animate lots of properties without having to turn on the stopwatch for all of these. So if we want to feed another property into this, let's say scale, instead of adding another animator right here, we can click add property scale, and we get below that position another scale. So now if we turn this down to zero, over this keyframe set, they're going to animate into place. So let's just say they're animating a little lower and they're going to scale. So now we can see they're animating from negative 487 and scaling into place. And we can keep adding properties. Let's say we added rotation. And the nice thing is this keyframe set is defined now, but we can keep adjusting these as we're looking at our animation and see what happens. So there's some position, rotation, and scale happening. And we can add lots of other stuff. Let's say character offset that will offset the letters of the alphabet so if we offset it a couple characters as they animate in they're all going to change characters and if we wanted to remove any of these let's say we don't want position anymore we could delete that or we could just turn it off and put it at zero 
and now we get a completely different animation. So it's a really good way to do a quick animation of multiple properties at once. And where this gets really useful is under this advanced tab. This is where we would deal with our easing as well as if it's animating letters, words, or lines. So right now it's going every letter at a time. If we wanted it to drop in and animate every word as a chunk, we could change this based on drop down to words. And now it's gonna animate the words at once that we can see animating there. And we can even change it to lines if we had multiple lines and it's gonna do that all at once. And let's just turn off this character offset by deleting that and we'll get back to this. So let's put this on words. And again, now we get this little animation. And if we wanted it to speed up, all we'd have to do is drag this keyframe in. And then we get this quick little rotating scaling animation coming into place. Now, if we want each word to ease in, we wouldn't actually add an ease on these keyframes because this is just the whole animation. What we'd want to do is adjust these ease high and low meters. So if we turn these on all the way up to 100, it's going to ease out at in each word in addition to the whole animation. So you can see it, that looks a little snappier and a little more fluid of animation as each of those come in. Now we don't have to adjust the easing on this again because that's just the whole container of animation. And there's some really cool little extra options under this advance with things like randomize order. So if we want the words to come in randomly as well as randomizing the seed, if we want it to come up with a different order, we could just change this number. Now where this gets really cool is when we start to add 3D properties and if we want to do that, what we can do is go to animate and enable per character 3D. And that's going to check on our 3D option for our text with this extra little 3D option icon. And now position and rotation will all have X, Y, and Z properties. So in addition to animating up and down, we could do things like animate them in space, let's have them move from away from the camera in Z by pulling this third back. And instead of Z rotation, let's rotate on the X axis. And now we could have them kind of flip up each word. So now we get this cool little animation with each word animating in 3D space and flipping up in 3D on that axis. And let's make that a little longer. And again, that's just very easy by adjusting that keyframe. And there we have some quick little additional animation. So working with character animators can make this process of typographic animation really quick and easy because we can feed different parameters, animate just the start, end, or offset, and still have live control over all those extra little parameters as well as what the text is. So if we wanted this to be something completely different but retain the animation properties, we could change the words you can tell I'm not a writer and we have that and these will apply to this as well as if we wanted to keep this going, let's just say these animate in and then we'll pull the end back. So they animate back out. So they fly in and then pop off. We could duplicate this whole layer with command D or edit duplicate, slide this whole thing over, press U to see all keyframes. And then just move this down and maybe change the text to something else here. And then we could keep that same animation and have it in this entire separate layer that we've duplicated and maybe change the parameters. So let's say maybe this one's a different color as well as maybe we go to advanced and randomize the seed. So the words don't animate in the same way. Let's add another property, maybe blur. And then they're also going to blur and kind of come into focus as they come in. And then we have kind of a quick, different little alternate animation that all we need to do is duplicate some parameters. 
Now, one last thing, because these are 3D type animator layers, they'll also work with camera properties. So if we added a new camera here, we can turn up our aperture and we can see that the text that's further away from the camera is actually out of focus. So we can also play with the 3D properties of our camera in addition to how those letters are animating. So type animators can be a really powerful way to create some custom little text animation and make it modular so you can redo those. I hope you learned a lot from this. And if you want to learn more about After Effects cameras, other topics like After Effects expressions, be sure to check out some of my other tutorials on After Effects motion graphics and animation by clicking any of those thumbnails right there. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube to get weekly tutorials on all of these subjects. And if you want to get access to this project file with some of these example text animators that I was showing at the beginning, you can like the Facebook page at facebook.com slash vital and send me a message or help support the show on patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.